Hey there, this is Nils Beardfoot and today we are building a dice maze. For this build I am setting the focus on the build itself and not directly on the leather. So I used a laser to get all the numbers and the pattern on the leather and cut it out. For more details on tooling the leather, check out my other videos. In addition to the pieces on the pattern, we need some straps for the handle cover and the pommel. You want to bevel all the edges that will stand for itself. On the thinner leather here it's totally okay to only bevel the top side. On the flesh side we want to cut some groove. These will act as folding lines for the dice. Punching some sewing holes as well, and then go straight into dyeing. For the straps I like to use dip dyeing, but usually you should use a bigger container. For the dice head I only put on a black base coat and later on we'll add another coat of paint. Punching some round holes since I forgot it earlier uh, in the die head as well as in these small straps and attach them with the rivets. Their job is later to attach the dice head to the handle. I recommend moistening the dice head from the flash side and use a bone folder to deepen the grooves that are already cut to make folding easier. Sew together all the triangles to get the dice shape, but do it only for the top part so you still can put the foam inside. Just like this. For the cushion inside I used a 3.5 cm thick very soft foam and glued on the paper Pattern of the dice, it does not really matter exactly how it is, you just need the individual triangles. And then you cut them out with a saw or with a knife. Also these triangles need an angle of around 55 degrees, does not need to be perfect. Put all the triangles in for a test and check if they fit. For five of these triangles you want to cut away one corner and position them in a circle and glue them loosely together. This is where the handle will go through. Then glue in all the triangles apart from the five we just spoke of. Now you want to sew the remaining triangles but keep the thread very very loose so you still can get stuff inside. For the core we start with a wooden cube of around 4cm edge length and drill a hole in it. Obviously the hole has to match the round bar that you use as handle. Next you want to glue on some styrodur, which is light but very strong and you want to target an 8 cm edge length cube. Some cling film helps me keep everything together until it's dry. Cut it roughly into these 8 cm edge length cube and we prefer to keep it a little bit bigger than 8 cm just in case. Next we want to cut it into the rough shape of a d20 dies, so we start by cutting it into a pentagon and check if it fits into the rest of our die set. 
We want to separate it into a quarter, a half and a quarter and along this first line we want to cut towards the wooden bar. Next we have to cut the edge of the middle part a little bit into a triangle and from there cut towards the other side of the head to get this d20 dice form. A d20 dice as reference can be very helpful here. Again use our dice head as reference if it fits and when it does Glue on these remaining five triangles and glue the whole core into the dice head. Now you can tighten all the thread. Very important here is when sewing this thread you definitely do not want to split the thread, else you won't be able to tighten it afterwards. And here you can see the slashes that will be glued directly onto the handle. Smooth out the straps a little bit and then wrap around one remaining thread to keep it very very strong together. For the pommel we need some small straps as chain attachments and here we thin them out at the ends and glue them on. With thread and nails, we keep them very strong in position. Finally getting some paint on. You could also do this um, earlier but I wanted to use the dry brush technique and therefore angles and corners are very welcome. To age it a little bit I put on some black antique gel and wipe away all the excess and then put on a coat of resist to seal everything. For the bar I use some pipe isolation that I just glue around it. Chances are good that it will be a little bit thicker at both ends, so just cut away some of the excess. And then start wrapping around the leather straps. This might look smooth, but it's actually very, very annoying just to keep everything in place with a slow drying glue, but this way I always can readjust them. Also, it's very important to get enough tension on these straps, just to keep them close. But that's something you also always can readjust, so you can take away a single strap later and glue it on again. And that's actually something I had to do for all the straps, because the tension was not strong enough. And it just did not feel good in my hand.
For the pommel piece it can be that depending on your diameter of the handle that you have to adjust your pommel piece a little bit. It fits perfectly for a handle with a diameter of 3.5 cm. Carefully put it into place, mark where the edges are, rough up a little underneath a little bit and glue them on. But stay away from the edges, they just need to be roughly glued on. And the rest is done by the sewing. Smooth out the sewing edges by cutting away any excess, sandpapering it, re-dyeing it and burnishing it. For the chains at the end we want to moisten them and then thin them out at both ends and turn them into a circle. If you have done already one chain piece you want to with the circle, put the other chain piece in. With a rivet, hold it all in place, then punch a round hole on the other side of the chain piece and put in another rivet. And this way you attach it to your pommel. And as a little finish, put on some Neepsfoot oil on the handle. And this is it. For the handle cover you do it the very same way as with the pommel. And you got yourself a LARP ready D20 mace. Wrapping the handle was quite annoying, but worked out fine in the end. I uh, hope you enjoyed this build. Leave a like and a comment. Check out my other tutorials and my patterns. See you guys next time. Have a great day!